Wearing a face mask for a few hours, sitting in the departure lounge at a very quiet Heathrow airport before boarding a plane to Turin isn't exactly a hardship when there's a car like the new Ferrari Roma waiting at the other end of the journey. The Roma is Ferrari's new GT car, and it's one that'll help define the next generation of Ferraris when it comes to design. It's a big evolution from what we know, and with Italy living up to its reputation in August, under sunny skies, the Roma commands attention. Everyone is going to have their own opinion on the design, but I actually really like the styling. When the Roma was first revealed, it was criticised for maybe looking a little bit like an Aston Martin Vantage or a Mercedes AMG GT in its proportions. But when you look a little bit closer and pick out the details, you'll see there are some lovely design nods to Ferraris of the past. So, take the grille. It's a lovely nod to the 250 GT Lusso of the 1960s. You'll also see that the nose is super low, and that's because the Roma is actually front mid-engined. So the twin turbo V8 is actually mounted behind the front axle line. There's a new eight speed dual clutch transmission as well, which has helped mount the powertrain lower in the chassis. And in turn, that pushes the two plus two cab further towards the back of the car. Despite the step change in design and the car's target audience, it's clear that aerodynamics have still been a massive part of the Roma's styling, with a focus on preserving the purity of its silhouette. It means that there are no obvious flicks or gaping vents in the bodywork. There is an active aerodynamic spoiler at the rear that deploys depending on speed and driving mode. While you'll see that the diffuser is more neatly integrated into the tail and it makes the most of the clever aerodynamics going on underneath the car that add a little bit more downforce and reduce drag. Design is a key theme at the rear as well though, and you'll see that something signaling the new era for Ferrari are these four flat LED strips. However, design alone is not enough for it to be a good GT car. And of course, wearing that badge, it has to be brilliant to drive. The engine will be a big part of that. It's Ferrari's familiar 3.9 litre twin turbo V8 that produces 612 brake horsepower and 760 newton metres of torque here. And it sends all of that to the rear wheels through a new eight speed dual clutch automatic gearbox helping lower the centre of gravity, but also allowing that low bonnet and interesting grille. Because it pumps out less heat as well, it needs less cooling. There's launch control, so the 0-62 mile an hour sprint takes 3.4 seconds, and it'll hit 199 miles an hour, which are proper GT car numbers. There are so many detail improvements and systems that have been taken from other Ferrari sports cars and reprogrammed for the Roma, but the big news is that the chassis is 70% new over the Portofino, with 10% softer rear springs to boost comfort, yet also a 10% reduction in roll. The Roma is a very capable GT car. We've driven it for a few hundred miles today on everything from motorways to alpine hill routes, and the ride and refinement are really good. It's not quite Bentley smooth, but then we never expected it to be because this is Ferrari's interpretation of a GT car. So arguably performance, agility and handling are more at the forefront of what the car offers. However, when you put the chassis into Ferrari's familiar bumpy road mode, which is now integrated into the Manatino switch on the steering wheel, the way the car absorbs bumpy broken tarmac and tracks over imperfections in the road is really quite impressive for something that is this agile and this responsive. It's the first time we've seen a five position Manatino on one of Ferrari's GT cars as well because the brand has added a race mode. When you flick it into race it activates Ferrari's dynamic enhancer. So basically there are similar systems taken from the F8 Tributo and the 488 Pista before that that can act on each wheel and break them individually to what Ferrari says is extract a bit more fun from the car and let you explore the balance with a safety net to lean on. It's been reprogrammed here for the Roma with the front engine layout of this car, but the results are just as effective. It lets you make the most of the powertrain as well because you can use the performance safe in the knowledge that you can have a little bit of a tweak or a slide and just tap into the car's adjustability but you've always got something there to rely on. 
and there is a lot of performance from the powertrain. Ferrari's variable boost management features here again and it's just as good because the torque ramps up in every gear to eight so it's fun to rev this engine out given it's turbocharged. It has a rush to the red line and it really pulls sweetly. However, there is a problem with the V8. While you can't fault it technically, emotionally, which you know brands are so keen on talking about these days, the noise doesn't stir the soul like maybe a Ferrari V12 would. It's not droney or intrusive. It's present and it does ramp up in the different modes and it's a, it's a soundtrack that accompanies the performance. But we'd like maybe a little bit more tone or quality from the sound. We can't fault the gearbox though. This new eight speed transmission is really good. In automatic mode, it perfectly fits the GT character of the car. It's happy to bimble around in top gear at 1000 RPM. And when you ask for a little bit of acceleration, it doesn't want to kick down, the engine response is good, and there's enough performance. If you want a little bit more and you go deeper into the throttle's travel, then it kicks down quickly and you're away. In manual mode though, it's where you really experience the improvements in shift times. Ferrari claims that due to technical sounding things like quicker clutch fill, the shifts are faster and smoother compared with the Portofino. And you really feel it. When you pull that right hand paddle, there's basically no interruption in drive. The shifts are really smooth. And on the way down, it's exactly the same thing. They're matched extremely well. But when you've finished having fun and you move the Manatino back to comfort, that ride quality and the refinement comes back to the fore and it reminds you, given everything else that the car has to offer, how well Ferrari's engineers have done to balance all of these attributes and make it exploitable, fun and usable at the same time. The steering is light, but the familiar Ferrari quick response means it changes direction with real agility, the differential working to help you out as well. Dynamically, it feels way more cohesive and together than a Portofino. But as much attention has been paid to how easy the Roma's functions are to use on the move as how good it is to drive. So there's a new human machine interface as the engineers like to call it. That's a touchscreen infotainment system and a digital dash panel to you and me. To be fair to Ferrari though, that's underselling it a little bit because it's really thought about the features in here. The interior design has taken a step on like the exterior. So you've got these lovely two swooping sections that separate the cabin for driver and passenger. There's been a big step on in technology as well. And that centers on the touchscreen, the steering wheel and the digital dashboard. So Ferrari's boffins have used the latest retina scanning technology to work out in their research exactly what drivers look at and which functions they use most frequently. And then they've grouped them on the steering wheel here with touch sensitive controls. Behind that, you've got a 16 inch digital dashboard that's configurable to show different data like the nav map. And in the center of the dash, you've got a portrait orientated touchscreen that controls other functions like the navigation, the climate control and the audio. Now, quality is mostly what you'd expect from a £170,000 Ferrari. All of this leather is really nice, but there are a few unusual touches like this chrome metal here and the black plastic surround to the infotainment system leaves a little bit to be desired. But overall, given Ferrari's more recent efforts in this segment have been crying out for an update, the Roma really addresses those points. It's worth pointing out that the tech on our test car was still a little bit laggy in places and the speed of response to inputs could have been a bit quicker. But Ferrari tells us that these cars are early build models and will have software fixes implemented soon. You can't deny the interior is an improvement when it comes to usability though. And on that subject, there are two small rear seats with enough space for younger children or some extra luggage room to complement the Roma's fair-sized 345 litre boot. The visibility is good too. That long bonnet means the front end is quite far away from you, but it's low so you can easily see the extremes of the car. 
One of the Roma's greatest tricks is how it blends its directness to drive with a supple and comfortable setup. So it should be great over long distances. Plus there's an 80 litre fuel tank, so cruising range should be good too. And Ferrari owners are arguably more bothered about this than MPG and running costs anyway. The Roma is a line in the sand for Ferrari then. We've not had many criticisms of the brand's latest cars dynamically, but this Roma rights the wrongs of the old school feeling interiors in its other models with much more tech and advanced design. Along with the SF90 Stradale, the Roma is writing Ferrari's next chapter and it is going to be a very interesting story. If you like this video and you want to see more Auto Express content, then don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Click the bell icon to turn on notifications so you never miss a new video.